What's going on? It's time for episode number two of North Carolina Sports Betting 101 with me, Tim Donnelly. And I'm really excited for this episode for this reason. Uh, We're betting the spread, okay? And, And when it comes to the spread, it is maybe the most simple bet that is designed to make outsiders new betters like many in the state of North Carolina are because uh, legal sports gambling and mobile sports gambling is still so relatively new. It's almost designed to make new gamblers feel intimidated or feel like outsiders. And it's because of the jargon, right? Lay the points, take the points, you got to cover. Um, uh, oh, you, you, did you get the hook? Uh, are you middling? Like there's all these these words that make you sit there and go, I don't know. It's it's like being on a boat of some kind. And, and uh, right, the, the captain and the first mate are yelling about the bow and the stern, and you're looking at him going like, you mean left and right? It's, it's, or, or front and back, right? Whatever those are. I don't actually go on boats that often. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to, uh, first of all, explain what, what betting the spread is and using a spread to your advantage and, and how you can place those bets, uh, but also break down some of the jargon, break down some of the uh, maybe intimidating things that make you sit there and nod when your friends are talking or uh, when, when a more experienced gambler is talking, you just nod even though you don't exactly know uh, w- what they're saying. So if we go to, and I like using kind of example bets here on these videos, uh, 99.9 The Fan, North Carolina Sports Betting 101, uh, we look at the Panthers-Saints. Okay, This is the week one game for the Carolina Panthers against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, the, the numbers we're focusing on this time are right here in the first column, uh, plus five and minus five. This might be one of those things you've heard, right? Um, this team is a blank, blank favorite. The Carolina Panthers are a five-point underdog. The New Orleans Saints are a five-point favorite. It actually, you know, even if you're not a gambler, you may use this term to, or this information to decide, uh, you know, how much a stronger opponent is uh, seen as as greater than a weaker opponent, right? So in this case, the New Orleans Saints are a five-point favorite over the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the, The logic you can deduce from that is that the Saints are five points better uh, based on the the gambling numbers and everything else uh, from the the Carolina Panthers uh, but really it is it is very simple right if you look at the the payout the odds it is uh, very similar to money line betting which if you missed that video you can find it on our channel uh, the the odds are going to be around minus 110 as you see in this example it's minus 112 and minus 108 uh, that essentially just means you're gonna have to bet $112 or $108 to win 100. That's the ratio for 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 stake, what you're betting, to winnings. Um, and most of the time, as you see in just about every other example on the screen right now that we're showing you, uh, it is minus 110. That's a very traditional number. You bet 110 to win 100, or you can bet 100 to win 90 and change. Uh, but looking at the Panthers, since that's the example we use, we usually use, um, The Panthers are plus five. All that means is uh, in order to win the bet, if you bet on the Panthers with the five-point spread, they have to lose, essentially, by four or less, uh, or they can can win. If they win outright, you win the bet. If they lose by four or less – you also win the bet. That's called a cover, right? When you are winning that bet, it is called a cover. That's one of those words you've probably heard. All it means is is winning the bet when you're when you're not betting the money line. Uh, um, New Orleans Saints are minus five. They have to win by at least six to win that bet. Uh, so so there are certain numbers in football betting that uh, that you want to pay attention to. Here's uh, one example here, right? Uh, threes, sevens, sixes are numbers you're going to pay attention to in football. And you can find these bets on just about any sport, but every single one's going to have a little bit uh, nuances, right? A few few little differences. Um, for example, uh, in football, the threes and sevens are important because oftentimes a team wins by a field goal or a touchdown. Uh, so if you can get if you are betting on an underdog, you want to do your best, right? If you're just, you know, all else equal, um, try to make sure you're getting plus three and a half, right? That way, if they lose by a field goal, you're still winning. Seven and a half. That way, if they lose by a touchdown, seven points, you're still covering the bet. Uh, in other sports, those special numbers, those those numbers that you're looking for in a bet are going to be a little bit different, but in football, they're very obvious, right? You want the threes, you want the sevens. Uh, speaking of, 
some of those uh, the the jargon, uh, laying the points. You hear that often. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Panthers and I'm gonna lay the points. Or I'm gonna take the Texans and I'm gonna lay the points. That simply means you're betting the favorite, right? So in this case, you'd be taking the Saints and laying the five. Taking the Saints, laying the points. That means you're betting the favorite. Taking the points means betting the underdog. Uh, I'm going to bet on the Panthers, and I'm taking the points, plus five. You hear that more and more when the spreads get large, right? In the NFL, you rarely see it. In college, spreads can get very, very uh, large uh, on football. I'm taking Louisiana Monroe and the points against Alabama. That spread might be 45 and a half. And, And taking the points means that they can lose by as many as 45, and you'll still win the bet. Uh, a cover, winning the bet. I went over that already. Uh, a push. If you see a bet that does not have a point five, which we'll explain is the hook in a second. So we can use this Panthers example again. If it's just flat five and uh, the Panthers lose by exactly five, that's a push. A tie, if you will. Uh, and that just means you're going to get your money back. It's not a win. It's not a loss. You escape with your stake. Uh, so so that's called a push, right? Some pushes are awesome, right? If it if you felt like you were losing the bet the entire game and then they score a Hail Mary and a nothing uh, doesn't impact the game, doesn't impact the winning or lo- uh, losing, but it gets you to that five, makes you feel great. Some pushes are brutal, right? It felt like you were winning the game the whole time and the reverse happens. You're like, oh man, I pushed. Uh, and a lot of times it's just kind of right there in, in the middle. Uh, another thing, the spread, right? Again, in this Panther Saints case, the spread is five. Uh, you can hear that talked about in a bunch of different ways. Some people call it the number. Some people call it the line. Some people call it the spread. It all means the exact same thing, right? Uh, hey, I bet on the Panthers. Oh, what line did you get? What number did you get? Simply means what is the spread on your bet because they do fluctuate, right? If, if you check in on a, a Tuesday for an NFL game on a Sunday and you see teams favored by five, if if – based on the public betting or based on an injury news or based on weather news, those numbers can move throughout the week and they do lock in. So when you bet on a, on a number, you lock it in. If it then changes, that gives you some opportunities, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the hook. The hook is the point five, uh, and, and that is just guaranteeing you, like I said, some of those numbers you're looking for. Uh, if, if you see a, a, a bet is – Minus three. Let's try to find one here. Here we go. Look at this. Jacksonville Jaguars and Dolphins. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars and Dolphins uh, game here. It's three and a half. That's that's nice if you are betting the underdog, right? So Dolph, or sorry, the Dolphins are the favorite, minus three and a half. If you're betting Jacksonville plus three and a half, they can lose by a field goal and you still win because there's that hook, that point five right there. Uh, so you want to pay attention to which side the hook's on. If it's two and a half, that's probably a little bit more in favor of betting the favorite because if they uh, if they win by or yeah if they win by a field goal, you are you are winning the bet. Line shopping is something that happens here. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of different sports books. I'm partial to to DraftKings Sportsbook, but if you're line shopping, you can you can look around at different sports books if you have the proper accounts and it's legal, and you can find the numbers that uh that most benefit your team. You might see minus three on one sports uh, one sports book, minus three and a half on another, and if you're betting the other underdog, you definitely want that hook. Uh, and lastly here, this is a little bit more advanced, right? I, I prefaced this whole segment by saying it was going to be simple. There's one complicated thing I'll, I'll give you, which is called middling, which would be uh, betting different sides of the bet with line movement or at different books where there is different line, opening yourself up to kind of a double payday. So let's use a very obvious example. Um, if the the Houston Texans here in this indie, uh, Texans indie game uh, we're favored by 10. Now we're not on these actual numbers. We're, we're crossing these out and we're just talking hypothetically. If Houston was favored by 10, you might bet Indy as the underdog, right? That way they could lose by up to nine points and you're still winning the bet. And then there's an injury or there's, uh, 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 I don't know, they eat bad clams and all of the starters on one team uh, go uh, are announced as out and it rapidly swings. So now it's a pick em game, right? 0-0, zero, zero, no one's favored. You can, you've already bet on Indy to win by, or to, excuse me, not lose by uh, more than nine. 
Now you can bet on Houston to win outright, and if Houston wins outright, there's there's a, a middle there that uh, that you can go ahead and win. Uh, it's kind of like winning both bets, but you need line movement or you need two different sports books that uh, that have different lines. But it's very simple. Once you get into it, you start to to see numbers as what they mean rather than the hardcore definition, uh, and and that's kind of you know where you get to when you do this a little bit. So that's the spread. That's betting the spread. That's everything you need to know about betting the spread. And just so you know, there's no chance in this video for how long we're doing it, I could give you all of the jargon. I gave you the basics, but your friends are going to have different words for it. Uh, you know, my friends, when they say taking the points, they, they uh, call it taking the easy way out. I don't know why. It's just something we've done for a long time. So there's jargon. There's slang that, that you're going to have to pick up as you go along. But at least you know the basics. That's what we're trying to do here in North Carolina Sports Betting 101. Uh, Stay tuned for our next episode.